Uh, well, good morning. Would you please stand, if you're able, for the presentation of our colors by the Joint Police and Sheriff's Honor Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored today to have Officer Brad Skank raise our flag for the first time over the new law enforcement center. Brad served in the United States Marines from 2000 to 2006 and the North Dakota Air National Guard from 2006 to 2017. He worked as a Clay County Sheriff's Correction Officer from 02 to 05 and then was hired by the Moorhead Police Department where he has now served for 13 years as a police officer. On May 17th, 2016, Brad was diagnosed with brain cancer and was unable to work for nearly two years. On March 1st, 2018, he returned to serve with the Moorhead Police Department. And now our national anthem will be performed by Tanya Jacobson and Denise Fox. Thank you, ladies, and thank you, Color Guard. Now it is my pleasure and honor today to introduce to you our distinguished county commissioners. Chair of our board, Jenny Mojo. <laughs> Vice Chair, Grant Whalen. <laughs> Building Committee Chair, Kevin Gamble. Commissioner Frank Gross. 
and Commissioner Jim Haney. Before I turn over the podium to our chair, I'd like to comment on the kind of bo county board you have and the type of determination it takes to complete the projects such as you see before you today. Your commissioners, acting on your behalf, and they always keep that in mind, have the wisdom to know it was time to respond to the continuing demands placed on our county law enforcement, and that's all county, I'm including all the de police departments in that, and the correctional responsibilities the county board holds. The courage to invest your tax dollars in behavioral improvements of our wayward citizens. Ambition and determination to invest for the long term. The intelligence and fortitude to complete the task. And the insight to engage the community's help, guidance, and approval. I know you applauded already, but please join me in showing your appreciation to this Clay County Board of Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Brian, for your kind words. Uh, oftentimes, an administrator is kind of the uh, go-between between, between the board and everything else. So, thank you for your guidance and leadership and respond to responding to our requests over this. You really helped make this happen. So, thank you very much. On behalf of my fellow commissioners, I'd like to thank you for joining us to celebrate this milestone today. This has truly been a process which has taken some time. Years ago, it was determined that we needed a, a new jail, that the needs of our county were quickly becoming too great for the oldest jail in the state, but the timing wasn't quite right for an expansion, and those plans were shelved. But in 2015, the financial burden associated with not expanding spurred the discussion once again. Countless meetings and strategic planning sessions with our staff were followed by key conversations with our partners and with our communities. The timing was right to expand our facilities, and they offered critical input that helped to shape what these projects would become. What became fully evident through these discussions was that we are a county that truly cares. We care about the working partnership that our Clay County Sheriff's Office has with other area departments, specifically the Moorhead Police Department. Thank you to Sheriff Berquist and Chief Ebinger for your uh, teamwork and collaboration. We stand behind our law enforcement and we are deeply thankful for their presence in our communities. Thanks also to Mayor Williams and the Moorhead City Council for their help in molding what this building looks like as well. We care about building a correctional facility and not a jail. A place where time is served but where professional help is available to address a mental health crisis or the burden of addiction. Thank you to our behavioral health unit for their discussion. Thank you also to Lakeland Mental Health for the grant that we will use to pay for those services. We weren't satisfied with inmates having to be housed far away from their families, their support structures, and we wanted to do better, to have an opportunity to help to reduce the chance of recidivism. We care about the changing needs of our county. The partnerships that molded the formation of these facilities are instrumental. I am grateful for the support of our citizens and the dedication of those who helped us to get where we were today, or where we are today. Uh, today, we are joined by Deputy Commissioner of Corrections, Ron Solheed. Uh, thank you for coming to Clay County. Thank you for doing what you do statewide to help uh, make sure that even though someone makes a mistake, uh, we can help to make their lives better. Uh, would you please join me in welcoming Ron Solheim. Thank you, and on behalf of, I know, uh, Governor Dayton, uh, unfortunately could not make it, but sends his regards and congratulations, as well as Commissioner Tom Roy, our Commissioner of Corrections, who had planned to be here today, but uh, as many of you, are, I'm sure, are aware that we suffered a tragic loss in our uh, in our state this last week on 
Wednesday the 18th, Officer Joseph Gom in our uh, correctional facility at, uh, at Stillwater uh, was essentially, he was killed in the line of duty. And that was a first for us as a, as a state agency at the Department of Corrections, uh, first in our state. So all of our staff are understandably reeling from this event and going through a roller coaster of emotions. And so uh, I would like to ask uh, for all of you to keep Officer Gom and his family and our corrections family in your thoughts and prayers uh, as we go through with his services this week. And that obviously is why as Commissioner Roy would not be here today. Um, and I will say too, just the recent incident that occurred here in neighboring county of Ottertail uh, with the abduction uh, of a woman uh, out of her home in Ottertail County, unfortunately points to the need for correctional facilities uh, like this and for law enforcement centers where there is collaboration between uh, county agencies, city police departments, and others to make sure that crimes are investigated, solved quickly, and people are held accountable uh, for their actions. In this state, we have over 80 jails, correctional facilities at the local level, which process over 200,000, just under 200,000 people a year that are intaked and released through county jails. We have 10 prison facilities which essentially intake and release about 8,000 people a year. And what we're seeing is an increasing number of individuals with mental health issues, an increasing number of, of, of individuals with addictions, and extremely violent offenders in some cases. Uh, the number one most common disposition in our local jails is for drug offenses and DWI offenses. Number two, behind our assaults and domestic violence offenses. So these facilities are needed uh, to keep our citizens safe, but also needed to provide programs and services to correct that behavior and provide opportunities for change. Uh, in our prison system, 35% of the offenders are seen by our health services staff for mental health issues. 26% of our adult male inmates and 47% of our adult female inmates are on some type of psychiatric medication. Over 60% of the juveniles at our juvenile facility in Red Wing uh, are also on psychiatric medications and have mental health issues that have been identified through the system. All of these folks come to us by way of local correctional facilities. So we understand what you're dealing with at the local level and know that um, more than just incarceration is needed to correct these behaviors uh, in, in people that we are working with. I have some personal history with Clay County. Uh, in 1988, I was the inspector assigned to the Clay County Jail. At that time, it was Sheriff Fisher who was the uh, was the sheriff, and I also worked with local officials here as they converted the sheriff's residence into a minimum security jail annex, and worked with your juvenile facility director at the time, Barry Steen, uh, with creating the new juvenile facility here, the West Central Regional Juvenile Facility. And we fully recognized at that time that constructed in 1966, the Clay County Jail was the oldest operating jail in the state. Uh, and even then, in 1966, local officials here in Clay County were very collaborative, uh, having a joint law enforcement center. It was one of uh, the first in the state, actually, uh, on the level that was provided here in, in Clay County. And I think it's really safe to say, uh, maybe echoing your county administrator's uh, comments, local officials squeezed every nickel out of the 52-year-old jail and law enforcement center here, and making it work all those years, um, and really you know, took advantage of, of the value of that facility during those years. And I, I will say on another note, the reason that facility lasted as long as it did and uh, was functional up till the present day 
is because of the operations in that facility by uh, Sheriff Burquist and his jail administrator, uh, Julie Savat. Um, it's They, they took what they had, which was in 1966, designed and built to last. Uh, it lasted about 25, 26 years longer than most correctional facilities, and I'm sure the law enforcement center was in the same, same boat with expansion through those years and not being able to adequately really address the needs of, of law enforcement community here. And it was really the increasing number of offenders boarded out, uh, aging physical plant, and lack of programming space and not meeting jail standards um, for the public safety needs of, of Clay County that really precipitated this move uh, to provide these modern facilities uh, which will really serve the city and the county and all of the citizens here very well. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, all of the folks that were involved, uh, especially the county county board here for, for pulling this together and, and putting plans together and truly developing a facility based upon collaborations. We had the opportunity uh, to walk through the facility uh, here at the law enforcement center with the chief deputy who pointed out all of the spaces here and it's, it's really incredible and I know all of you will be touring it shortly um, and you know to know that there are space in here for the, the city police, the sheriff, the BCA, uh, the state patrol, really truly is a collaborative effort and really pr promotes the communication and the collaboration between law enforcement agencies to really improve public safety for all of us. Um, I also want to recognize retiring chief of police, Deb, uh, David Ebbinger, who's seated right here and I know is going to be speaking shortly. I think we all need to really thank him for his service. And incoming chief who was just appointed last night, I understand, Shannon Monroe. Uh, congratulations on that appointment. And I also want to recognize your design team who was involved in, in designing this facility. Uh, it included members of local government, the judiciary, citizens from, uh, from Clay County, with input on what the new jail and public safety facility will look like and the services and programs that they will provide. Uh, and it's really important, as your county board chair, Jenny mentioned, it's about changing behavior. Uh, changing the behavior of folks that are unfortunately uh, not in the same condition as we are or in the same position as we are uh, is only the, the way we can get at public safety, if we can change that behavior and make them better citizens than when they came through our doors and return them back to citizens in the society. Because 90% of folks in prison are getting out, everyone in your county jail is getting out at some point. So we need to make sure we're taking care of those issues and those needs and I think this facility is planned around that, which I congratulate all of the folks involved in, in pulling together. Um, the, de the Department of Corrections has collaborated with Clay County for many years. Our, uh, our probation and parole agents have been working here in the county and collaborating with local law enforcement. And so, the, again, the collaboration goes on between state and county here. And I can just say that uh, it's going to result in the best possible outcomes for public safety if those collaborations continue. So, again, Thank you for inviting me to be here today. Congratulations to everyone involved in this incredible event in these facilities, and keep up the good work. Thank you. I'd like to introduce the Vice Chair of Board, Grant Wayland. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. What a great turnout. Uh, uh, this, uh, I was a police chief in Moorhead until I retired about 12 years ago, and uh, 20 years ago we started working on this project, so nobody is happier than me that we're here today. So I was telling uh, 
former mayor Maury Lanning and the state representative uh, Morin officer told me yesterday that he never thought he'd see this in his career. And I told him I never thought I'd see this in my lifetime. So, so, so we are really happy to be here today. And uh, uh, Commissioner Campbell was supposed to speak, but he's a little under the weather, and so uh, uh, I'm going to fill in for him for a few moments here and uh, see if we can uh, thank everybody who helped with this this project. Uh, and I think you'll see when you do the tour what a, what a magnificent project it is, uh, both uh, the correctional facility and the law enforcement center. So on May 9th, 2017, just a bit over 14 months ago, we met on the other side of this building for a groundbreaking ceremony uh, for these two facilities. Prior to that ceremony, much planning had been done to prepare for what culminates today. On August 11, 2015, county, the County Commission contracted with Klein McCarthy Architects to do preliminary design work and to establish early cost estimates for these projects. A short time later, the County Commission approved a construction committee. The construction committee was tasked with working on recommending a final design and in the process reviewed 17 different site locations to be considered. At about the same time, both the Finance Committee and the Behavioral Health Committee were formed. The Finance Committee, of course, was tasked with coming up with a financial plan to pay for the projects. The first task of the Behavioral Health Committee was to, sure, to be sure that the design for the correctional facility incorporated the necessary features to be successful. The second task of the committee was to work on the critical programming component of the project regarding mental health issues of the inmates that our previous jail could not handle. The Finance Committee agreed with a recommendation that a county-wide sales tax was the best way to fill the gap necessary to construct these projects with little or no additional property taxes levied to our citizens. With the help of the Morad Business Association, led by Les Deanerson, who served on our Construction Committee, the fargo Morad Chamber of Commerce uh, with Craig Whitney and Darren Dunlop, the City Councils with our county, with Mike Hewlett representing the City of Moorhead on this construction committee. The Township Officers Association with Gary Bergen served on our construction committee. Our law enforcement associations and the many service clubs, all these entities supported the one half cent sales tax that was approved with overwhelming support by the voters of Clay County. Thank you to all these groups and to all our citizens for their support. Thank you to our local legislators, Ken Eek and Ben Lean and Paul Marquardt for their help with state approval required for our sales tax referendum. Once the funding was in place, the County Commission authorized the purchase of two city blocks recommended by various committees for the current projects and future needs of the county. This plan eliminated the alternative of very costly five billable parking ramp. On February 16, 2016, the County Commission entered into a contract with the construction engineers to see the projects, to oversee the projects, and to provide us with the gross maximum prices for these projects. The correctional facility in the LEC had a combined gross anticipated cost of $46,750,000 uh, $46, and included $1.6 million in contingencies. The land acquisitions, streets, and miscellaneous expenses added to an additional $5.25 million for a total project of $52.5 million. And I might add there that uh, when we were broke ground, uh, we were informed that the first uh, Clay County uh, Sheriff's Office and jail, I think, cost a little under $3,000. So there's been a little bit of inflation in the last 125 years. So. We are happy to report today that these projects are being delivered to the public on time and on budget, and we currently still have approximately $1.1 million in unused contingency dollars with the LEC 99% complete and the correctional facility 80% complete. All of this hard work cannot be done without acknowledging several individuals and organizations for their efforts. First on the list, thank you to the 23 property owners who voluntarily sold their properties to make these projects possible. Our architects, Glenn McCarthy, represented on stage today by Scott Fedick. Matt Keenan, the lead architect on the correctional facility, and Danielle Reed, the lead architect on the LEC, are also here today. Construction engineers represented on stage by Nick Feike, the project manager, and thanks to Ben Matson, Jeff Reed, and the rest of their crew. These folks did a fantastic job, which you'll see later when you do the tours. 
Many of our county and city departments had major roles in accomplishing these projects. The taxpayers of Clay County should know that all of these people work diligently to bring you these facilities while working very hard to keep the costs down. The, the, uh, the county attorney's office, Jenny Smarsha, worked hard on the property closings, ballot measure processes, and many other issues. Building and grounds, Joe Olson and George Baudry, overseeing from demolition to asbestos removal to the beautiful grounds we have today. Uh, Brian's right hand, uh, Colleen Eck, uh, contributed considerably to this project. IT and information services, Mark Sloan, Tim Dent, and Chris Raddy from the city of Moorhead for the difficult task of making sure that technology is up to date. To our former commissioners who helped this planning process, thank you. To Commissioner Haney, thank you for coming into this project and supporting the vision we had. To Commissioners Mojo and Gross for their leadership of the extremely important and necessary behavioral committee, which also included our social services department, uh, Director Rhonda Porter, and to our public health director, Kathy McKay. And uh, thanks to uh, Lakeland Mental Health for the contributions they made in this project. And thanks to uh, Commissioner Campbell, who uh, was the chair of this committee and uh, did an outstanding job and put in an, an incredible amount of time on this project. So please join me in thanking all these people who helped make these projects possible. And finally, to Brian Berger, County Administrator. You took the vision and the direction from the board and you carried out that mission with perfection. We cannot thank you enough for the countless hours you spent from planning this project right up until today. How ironic is it that you spent most of your career in law enforcement and today, as you leave, you leave helping our law enforcement agencies with the proper facilities for the generations to come. Yet, together, we all want to say thank you Congratulations on a fantastic career, and we are so thankful you spent your final years of your career with us. So thanks to Brian. <laughs> and uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, Chief David Ebinger and uh, Sheriff Bill Berquist. Uh, they have some comments on the project. Uh, uh, this project wouldn't have been possible without their contributions, and so thanks to both of them, and uh, we'll turn it over to them. Thank you. First, I'd like to welcome to the ribbon cutting ceremony for the Joint Law Enforcement Center for the Clay County Sheriff's Office and the Moorhead Police Department. I would like to thank everyone for being here today to help us celebrate this wonderful occasion. When I first became sheriff, I put the new correctional facility and law enforcement center project as a top priority to complete while I was in office. It took a lot of hard work by many different people and organizations to get it accomplished. I would like to thank the following people and organizations who assisted getting us this project. The media was instrumental getting the information out to the public and they could be informed of the project. The Moorhead Business Association for assisting with the funding for the project with the half cent sales tax. And for County Administrator Brian Berg and the Clay County Commissioners for the hard work they put into the project and for their continued support to the Sheriff's Office. Clay County IT Department, Clay County Facilities Department, and all the Clay County Departments that helped us get this project completed. Last, I would like to thank all of the Sheriff's Office staff for all the hard work they did over and above your regular duties. You did a great job and made us all look proud. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. As been has been stated by some of the other speakers, planning to replace our aging jail and law enforcement center been tried for a number of years until an effective plan was energized by a core group of county commissioners and the Clay County Administrator. They had the vision and the commitment to bring this project to fruition. I want to thank Commissioner Campbell, Commissioner Whalen, and Administrator Brian Berg for breaking the inertia 
making this project happen. I'm also grateful to the Clay County Commission as a, as a whole for providing the leadership and the commitment to see this through the end. I also need to recognize our citizens, as has been indicated. At a time where law enforcement very often finds themselves wondering whether we're supported by the public, we have a public and groups within that public who led the, the information project. We have a public that's willing to pay for the facilities we need. It's a terrible underestimation of the intelligence of this community to think that no taxes is the right approach in every instance. If you have a need and a, our intelligent public understands it, they will get the resources to public uh, entities such as the Sheriff's Department, the Police Department to accomplish our mission and I'm grateful to them for that. The beauty, functionality and economy of these two facilities is a result of hard work and attention to detail of the talented staff that the Sheriff and I are fortunate enough to have. 40% of the law enforcement center is dual use. That's 40% of a facility that doesn't need to be replicated because we have a partnership between the sheriff's office and the police department, the city and the county, where the taxpayers don't have to pay twice for an essential service. Among that talented staff, I think that uh, I want to I want to make sure that we recognize a few individuals who stepped up and showed incredible leadership make this happen. Julie Savat, Justin Roberts with the Clay County Correctional Facility, and Matt Ciro and Steve Lansom with the Sheriff's Office demonstrated the commitment to develop not just a facility, but state-of-the-art facilities that will serve us into the future. And as, <laughs> and as so often has been the case, Shannon Monroe, and Tori Jacobson, the Moorhead Police Department, were there to use their creativity and their attention to detail to make this facility what it is. They spent hours and hours, along with a number of our other staff members, to make this a facility that is streamlined and works for our department, works for our officers. I'm extremely excited about the selection of Deputy Chief, soon to be Chief Monroe, as our next leader in the Moorhead Police Department. I want to point out something that a lot of people, I've, I've had the word mentor directed at me and I'm very uncomfortable with that. I came here 12 years ago from a very different city, in a very different department, and I needed to be educated. And there's been a lot of people in the Moorhead Police Department and in the city of Moorhead that have stepped up and given me knowledge and wisdom that has helped my last 12 years be a wonderful experience for me. Foremost among those has been Shannon Monroe, who has spent 10 years as my deputy chief, more often than not giving me guidance as opposed to the other way around. And the department is very fortunate to have him assume the helm, and I'm excited to see the next level he's going to take this part to. Finally, I want to take a moment to thank the men and women of the Moorhead Police Department and the citizens of Moorhead for making my last 12 years as Chief of Police a wonderful experience. I've learned something from the Moorhead uh, Police Department and how they interact with our public. There's a debate in my profession about whether we're warriors or we're guardians. The officers of the Moorhead Police Department have taught me something. If the public accepts you as their guardian, they'll trust you when you're the warrior. Uh, few chiefs can say with the confidence that I can say today that you've got both folks and you're very fortunate to have it. And in deference to Commissioner Whalen, I found him that way. I didn't make it that way. I inherited a department where that was the attitude. I am very excited that we have this new facility for our officers to move into. But I can't help relating to the old facility. Both of us have served our time. We've been around a lot longer than anybody thought we would be. And we've served the best of our ability. And there comes a time to step aside and let the new come in, to meet the new challenges, to, to come to the new level. 
and I am very grateful to the men and women of the police department and our citizens for having let me serve for the time I have. And I look forward to watching where this department's going to go in the future. Thank you. Chair Perkins is going to join me. Uh, as we look to the future in this wonderful facility, we've made efforts within it to remember our past. You'll see that when you take the tour with some of the photographs and some of the things that are in the lobby. But most of all, we want to remember our past through permanently dedicating some of this facility to our fallen brothers within the police department, the sheriff's office uh, that uh, have served before us. And right now I'm going to dedicate where we're going to dedicate some of the rooms and identify the officers and deputies that uh, they're dedicated to and recognize some of the family members that are here. Uh, Richard Berta, patrol deputy and narcotics investigator uh, with the Clay County Sheriff's Office. In 1973, he passed away from a heart attack uh, while in service to the citizens of Clay County. He has family members here today that we appreciate you coming. And we're going to dedicate the uh, first floor conference room to Deputy Berta. <laughs> Deputy Scott Rogers, uh, formerly of the Moorhead Police Department, uh, on the end of watch, he was serving as a Clay County Deputy Sheriff. In 2006, or I'm sorry, uh, Deputy Rogers had been a member of the Red River SWAT team and was firearms instructor for the uh, Clay County Sheriff's Office. In 2006, uh, Scott had a heart attack while participating in the Sheriff Department's physical fitness uh, program. Uh, in honor of that, uh, we're going to dedicate our fitness room on the second floor to Deputy Scott Rogers. <laughs> Officer Peter Poole. In 1888, Officer Poole, the Moorhead Police Department, was shot and killed by a murder suspect while assisting two other officers uh, in a hostage situation at gunpoint at A Street and Center Avenue, where the Wells Fargo office now stands. The suspect was eventually apprehended and convicted of murder and executed on September 20th, 1889. We're going to dedicate our media room on the first floor to Officer Peter Cole. <laughs> Officer Alexander Sandy McLean. <laughs> Officer McLean of the Moorhead Police Department in 1899 responded to a structure fire in uh, the neighborhood that's now part of the Viking Ship Park north of the Yonkholm Center. Uh, while controlling people that were drifting up towards the fire scene and moving them out of harm's way, a chimney collapsed and fell on, on Officer McLean. He was killed. Uh, we're going to dedicate the center training room in, uh, in on the first floor to Officer McLean. <laughs> and lastly, uh, we want to uh, remember Officer Roy Larson. In 1930, Officer Larson was shot and killed by Ray Liggett, a bank robber who fled from the Fargo police. Larson cornered the suspect near the coal shed of the Interior Lumber Company and after uh, several shots were fired and a shootout ensued, uh, he was killed. The suspect was arrested and sentenced to life. We're going to dedicate the uh, one of the training rooms on the first floor to Officer Larson. And again, we're thankful and we appreciate the attendance of family members of, of uh, Deputy Berta, Deputy Rogers, and Officer Larson who are here with us today. Please look at the memorials in the rooms when you take the tour to see your family members' memorial that will be here for the length of this building. And thank you. I appreciate everybody's attendance today. Hey, you know, uh, Chaplain Aaron, for the blessing. Good morning to all of you. It is so good to be with you on this beautiful, beautiful day and this most exciting day as well. We now enter into a time of prayer and blessing. Let us bow our heads. 
Gracious God, we give thanks and offer our gratitude for all those involved in building the Law Enforcement Center and the Clay County Correctional Facility. Their diligent and faithful work allowed them to create these needed spaces that will serve our community for generations. Creating God, we ask that you would bless the Clay County Correctional Facility and keep all who enter and leave the building safe and in your care. Please watch over and bless correctional officers and support staff and keep them safe in their work. We pray also for the inmates who will serve time in this facility. May this building be the first step on their path towards rehabilitation. May they find new life and light in the midst of darkness. Protecting God, we ask that you would bless the Law Enforcement Center and keep all who enter and leave the building safe and in your care. Watch over, protect, and bless officers and deputies from the Moorhead Police Department and Clay County Sheriff's Office and other law enforcement members that enter its doors. Bless and protect support staff, community service officers, and all those who work to bring safety and peace to our community. May the Law Enforcement Center serve as a place of refuge and a place where all who enter can gain strength to serve and protect our community. We give thanks for this day to celebrate the work of law enforcement and corrections personnel and these new buildings. May God bless us this day in all that we do. Amen. Please join us for the ribbon cutting. That concludes the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. Thank you again for all being here. Uh, now we extend an invitation for everyone here to uh, take a tour of both the correctional facility and the new law enforcement center and uh, enjoy some refreshments here under the tent. And uh, we're glad you were all here and uh, thanks again.